Hi folks, this is Peter Boykin. I'm running for Lieutenant Governor of North Carolina. I'm driving work right now. It's pretty dark, so I have an overlay of the of what just went on tonight, late tonight, middle of the week, so they're not trying to bury it. They have indicted Donald Trump for the fourth time in Georgia, of all places, for speech because he dared to contact people saying, hey, what's going on? Your votes are wrong. You need to check on the process. You need to make sure that when you're counting these votes, that you're not counting fraudulent votes. And uh, if you're, since you're counting so many votes, then you should be able to find my correct vote. Why don't you do something about the corrupt system? And then they even want to indict Donald Trump or charge him for speaking to his own vice president. Not only do they want to indict Donald Trump, they also want to indict 19 other people, including Giuliani. They want to call Donald Trump a racketeer, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If anything, this is proving, folks, with this being what the fourth area now, that all of this is quite literally bullshit. It's bullshit. It's not important. This is throwing spaghetti at a wall and hoping that something sticks. This is nothing but political kabuki theater. We know it, you know it, everybody knows it. Like Donald Trump said, another indictment will make him president. So I'm basically giving everybody a challenge. If you call yourself a Republican, if you care about America, it's time for you to stand up and support Donald Trump. Even if you don't agree with everything he stands for, do you not realize that everybody has been against this man because he's the only one who spoke against the swamp, who fought back, and they couldn't touch him financially? Now let's go through what the left normally does with somebody. Boom, they pick somebody. They claim that they're racist or they're uh, anti-Semitic, etc., etc. They did this with Roseanne. I talked to Roseanne that day. She got in trouble years back. They were trying to say she was anti-Jewish, but she's Jewish herself. They were out to get her. So they take people down for racism. If that doesn't work, what do they move on to? They might move on to the financial element. For Donald Trump, it was years and years of tax returns, tax returns, tax returns. And when they finally got the tax returns, Crickets. It was over because they found out that Donald Trump's a very smart man with these doing his taxes. He should be. He has lawyers and tax people and accountants to do his taxes properly and save money legally. Nothing regular with that. That's why they dropped that. And then what did they do after that? Oh, they tried to do the whole sexual allegations. They tried to say about the grab them by the whatever and the uh, Samantha, whatever her name, Fox, or whoever these people are that they throw against the wall. They got one lady supposedly getting charged. Oh, Donald Trump broke me or touched me sometime in the 90s. I don't even remember when. Somewhere in the last 10 years, he touched me. What? It's ridiculous. In reality, none of these would go anywhere. because it's, But it's Donald Trump. We just throw all the laws and all the legality out the window. And justice is sparse, right? So they try to get you for sexual stuff. Still couldn't get Donald Trump. They, I mean, the, their prize is what? Are they trying to get Donald Trump and Melania to break up? She knows it's all BS. And Donald Trump is smart to keep her in the back and leave her out of it. So none of those work. So what was the next thing? The next thing is to throw laws, and you broke laws, and... Remember what they did during the impeachment. Ukraine gate, Russia gate, etc. Now remember folks, Russia gate came from Hillary Clinton refusing and and the Democrats refusing that Donald Trump legitimately won the election. They claimed election fraud and they claimed that Russia was behind it. And then they claimed Russia gate. And so Donald Trump was on the reverse end of this and they were accusing Donald Trump of election fraud and he was in trouble because he committed election fraud and all of that was thrown out 
All of that went nowhere. All of that now turned out that these people lied. And do they get in trouble? No. Do our current Republican leadership do anything to stop it? No. Are they speaking out on a daily basis? No. Do they have any fall? No. They don't. And you can now say, well, we can't take the one, one person because of the primary. No, you don't understand the destruction of America is happening because of what they're doing with Donald Trump. Okay? So, all of that got thrown out. Hillary Clinton's not in trouble. People point this out. She's not in trouble. She committed, She was complaining, and they were complaining about election fraud. They dreamt up uh, dream worlds where Hillary actually won, and alternative, all sorts of things. And they call us crazy. And here it is, in 2020, there was fraud. There was election fraud. Oh, and YouTube wouldn't let you talk about election fraud until most recently. It was buried that they allow you to talk about it now, because what did they find out? They didn't say it happened in the 2020 election, but they say that the Dominion voting machine can be easily hacked. If you ever watched the number magic, I think magic numbers, or whatever they call it, video, it talks about how you go into the back end, change the numbers around, because it's digital. You don't have a paper trail, you can change the numbers around. Look at the statistics, folks. I did statistics for almost 10 something years. And giant jump ups and curves and all sorts of crazy things, and it doesn't pass the spell test on corruption, and it doesn't meet what happens normally in an election, because numbers and patterns happen at the same time. It happens stuff. There's very rarely is there a giant change. And COVID was not that giant change. But they blame it on that. They'll blame it on that. It doesn't jump. You don't jump up to 65% of uh, absentee ballots in North Carolina when it's always been, what, 18%. It's crazy. But if it wasn't for North Carolina, how we were big and bold about making sure that election fraud didn't happen, they didn't get away with it. But we were on limbo for, I don't know, a month or a month or so until they finally said, okay, North Carolina, you know, the fix was in for Georgia and now for North Carolina, we can go ahead and let those votes go through. They had North Carolina set back up. Some lieutenant governor, anything that I can do to try to make sure that there's not election fraud or, or making sure that we have election integrity, I will stand up and do what I can in my position wouldn't allow you a lot to do, but I will cheerlead to make sure this stuff doesn't happen as much as I can. So, here we are, down the line, Donald Trump getting in trouble for what? What's the Mar-a-Lago thing? For having paperwork? It's paperwork. And like he said, there's lawyers and everything, and I believe it, Donald Trump every every right to have his paperwork with him and to have time to determine what paperwork is something that he wants to pass up, what's this, what's that. He has a determination. So to me, I think even if you're even if you're corrupt, you know, like some of the bad uh, other president, presidents we have, I believe you still retain or should still retain your secret clearance. So Donald Trump has every right to those papers. And that facility, mar lago is a security facility, even though they do hot business there. It's operated under the secret, uh, you know, secret service and everything. Donald Trump had every right to have those documents. And they were documents. Most were old. What are they going to really do? But no, they want to say he didn't turn the documents, and that's, that was the first charge. And the other charges are just basically that they dared bring up that they believe that the election was fraud. We didn't have lawyers, we didn't have judges who had balls enough to stand up and actually look at the legitimacy of the election. Our Vice President Mike Pence had the legal right to put a hold on the election count so we could have bureau, you know, even if it's two weeks, Combing over the votes. 
but he didn't do that. And we was angry. Tucker Carlson talked to multiple people, including the police chief in Washington, D.C., about what was going on on January 6th. And it was a setup because they knew people were mad. And they set people up. And they tried to go after the key leaders of organizations and groups to try to shut down any kind of outrage. But I'm telling you this, I don't know. I don't know how bad the outrage will get if they try to put Donald Trump in prison. Or if they continue this mess. Or if they steal an election again. I don't know how much more the American people can handle this. Most everybody knows that the blame is on the Biden. What they're doing in the White House, not really running the office of the presidency properly. Now you're surfing legal powers, bending the wheel of the Constitution, or ignoring the Constitution, because God knows they did during COVID. What are we going to do? Now people are going to, oh God, we need to have a civil war. Ah, no, 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 no civil war, folks. But we do need to have more moderate. We need to have more moderation in our government. And we do need to get rid of the so-called swamp on the left and the right. The people who do nothing but continue this mess, continue this fight, and allow this to happen. So if you're going to wake up and stop what's going on against Trump, you need to support Donald Trump. You need to stop everything and support Donald Trump. Or what you're literally doing is you're complacent in the destruction of America. And I know a lot of people go, well, it didn't seem like that. No. It's not just Trump they're going to go after, folks. If they can go after Donald Trump, they can go after us. And they are going after us. I'll admit, I've been IRS audited almost every year since I became political. If they're going after me, a little low, you know, I'm not that not that important in the scheme of things. If they're going after me, and they're censoring me, and they're censoring my speech, but now they're going after Donald Trump. They can go up after anybody. Don't you understand that? They can go after Santa. They can go after Pence. They can go after Vic Swanee. They can go after Nikki Haley. They can go after Chris Christie. They can go after... Chris Scott or whoever his name is, Tim Scott, they can go after whoever is the next person in line. They get rid of Donald Trump, they'll just go to the next person and they'll compete with the same thing that they do. They'll go after the money, they'll go after his sex life, they'll go after racism, then they'll just go make up law or make up crimes. So at the end of the day, this indictment, trying to go after people, trying to... Expose, they, they're treating Donald Trump like he's a mob. It's ridiculous. You know it, I know it, we all know it. And I might be running for Lieutenant Governor of North Carolina in 2024, but that does not keep my mouth shut about what's going on in national politics. And a lot of people say, well, maybe you shouldn't mention that you support Donald Trump. Why? I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for my support for Donald Trump and what stands behind Donald Trump and what he stands for. There's a few things occasionally now we might not see eye to eye with, but Donald Trump has been the best thing for America since Ronald Reagan. So what are we going to do, folks? The time is the essence, and I know we say every year, every two years, the most important election in history but we're kind of running out. We're at the 11th hour. We're at the 11th hour in almost 59 minutes. What are we going to do? If anybody saw Oppenheimer, I don't think I've watched that movie yet, but it's all about nuclear energy, nuclear bombs. Do you see Biden with control of the football? Control of the nukes? kind of reminds me of Vladimir Putin who's on his deathbed practically having a finger on the bomb we're only a few steps away from total death for all
And I would rather have Donald Trump leading this nation, a strong person leading this nation, than in over four years of Joe Biden. We can't handle it. We can't. And that's how I feel. And I'll be doing more podcasts. We'll get Go Right News going and we'll have more news up. I'm going to keep chugging along with this campaign. You can go to peterboykin.com. Check us out. I'm looking for volunteers. I'm not asking for money, folks. Money's great. If people want to come forward and help, that's fine. I'm looking for volunteers to make phone calls that people know. Although we have some rallies in North Carolina soon. I know it sounds weird having them in the fall or winter, but this summer's been rough. But we're going to let people know that all votes matter. More than ever before in this election in 2024, all votes do matter. So check out the website, peterboygan.com. I do have GoWriteNC.com, uh, which I'll probably be posting more things on, North Carolina related. We have GoWriteNews.com. You can check out new articles and everything. It all comes down to getting a voice out there. Hi, folks. My name is Peter Boykin, candidate for lieutenant governor. Our great nation, the United States of America, is a republic founded on the principles of life, liberty, and equality. But these principles can only endure if we exercise one of our most sacred rights, the power to vote. All votes matter because here in North Carolina, just like the rest of the United States, we are all citizens of different backgrounds, ages, and walks of life with a voice and a vote that matters. From the busy streets of our cities, to the serene landscapes of our countryside, every single American voice matters. It's not just a vote. It's your voice, your values, and your vision for a better future. Our Constitution guarantees us these rights, and it's our duty to protect and defend them. But that duty goes beyond mere words. It requires action. Voting is the cornerstone of America, the bedrock upon which our republic stands strong. By casting your vote, you shape the course of our nation. You decide the direction we take, whether it's strengthening our economy, preserving our freedoms, or ensuring the safety and security of our citizens. Our history is marked by the sacrifices of those who fought tirelessly to expand the right to vote, to ensure that every voice is heard. From the suffragettes who blazed the trail for women's voting rights to the civil rights movement that shattered barriers of discrimination, we honor their legacy by making our voices heard. Let us unite in the spirit of America. Let us celebrate our republic. Let us honor those who came before us by exercising the power to vote. I urge you to rally with me. Join me in defending our constitutional rights to life, liberty, and equality. All votes matter. Let's make our voices heard. Together, we can shape a brighter future for our beloved nation and North Carolina. Vote Peter Boykin for North Carolina Lieutenant Governor. Visit peterboykin.com to volunteer and to find out more about the platform. Remember, folks, all votes matter. God bless.